As many of you know, I use Core Framework alongside Bricks for the majority of my projects these days. Well, 1.40 of Core Framework was just released, and with it, there are a couple of quality of life enhancements I wanted to draw your attention to. Before we do, though, let me just ask you quickly, do you use Core Framework? If you do, what do you use it with? Bricks, with Gutenberg, Generate Press, those kinds of things? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the changelog, which is linked down below, and then we'll see exactly how these different things work. So as you can see, we've got several different things added here, including a new onboarding wizard, the new contextual variables for spacing and typography, editing single shades and tints, and several more. So let's take a quick look at the onboarding wizard first of all, and then see some of these other features. So I'm gonna hop over to the Core Framework website, log in, and from there, we're going to create a new project. Now, you can do this inside the core framework itself, or you can do it when you install the plugin in whatever tools you use. So let's just say this is a new one. We'll create this. And you can see this now takes us into the new little wizard. Now, it's a pretty simplistic affair, but it does do a couple of things to make your life just a little easier. First of all, do you want the full experience, the variables only, or totally empty, so you can start with a completely blank slate? For this example, let's just say let's go for variables only for a minimalistic setup. Click Continue. It says then, do you want to use the root font size? And this will try to auto-detect for you, so you can choose between 100% or 62.5%. In this example, let's switch it over to 62.5 just to show. We'll leave dark mode enabled and we'll click finish. And now we have a pretty simplistic setup. So if we go through, you can see there's all our colors are in place, our basic starting points for brand and so on. Jump into typography, you can see the basics are inside here as well. But you'll notice things like headlines or headings, light heights, text modifiers, text alignments and so on are all disabled because we've basically chosen a completely bare bones setup. If we take a look at the preview in the CSS, again, you can see inside here, it is a pretty simplistic affair. And we can see that this is down to 6.3 kilobytes and minified 2 kilobytes, so pretty much next to nothing at all. Hit your save changes and you are good to go. If we jump into spacing, you can see we've got the basics inside here, but again, we've got no gap classes or margin classes and so on, so you can set these. If you don't use them, you can leave them. Just keeps everything nice and small and simple. Components, empty. Layout, empty. Design, just other than some radiuses for your border radius and some box shadows, there's pretty much nothing else in there. And other, as you can see, is pretty much empty as well. So now you can, if you want to, start filling out and setting up what you want. But all comes out of what you chose right back at the beginning. Now let's jump back into our colors and take a look at one of the key new additions that have been added in, and that is the new color pickers. So before we just basically had some normal standard color pickers, but now we've got more flexibility depending upon what color model you're actually using. So let's just switch this over first of all to the hexadecimal. We'll click inside for our colors and you can see we get a color chip and we've got the RGB channels. Switches over to hex with alpha channel, Open this up and you can see we now have the alpha channel added in. If we switch this over to something like RGB, you can see we get a very similar setup. However, if we change this over to something like HSL, we now get a different type of color picker. And again, if we choose HSL with the alpha channel, we get the alpha channel option inside here as well. So you've got more flexibility when it comes to choosing the colors that you want inside Core Framework itself. And this is the same whether you're using the online application or you're using it as part of your website using one of the plugins that you can get, Bricks, Gutenberg, and so on. Now, speaking of those colors, let's expand our primary out. And inside here, you can see what we've always had, which is the generating shades. We can choose the number of shades that we want. But before that, this was always just set. Once you chose the shades, they were predefined and you had no real choice of changing them other than manually editing the CSS code. However, now if you come over any of these, you'll see that we have the edit option. And again, depending upon what color mode we're using, we'll have the relative color picker. We've also got the variable that's associated with it. So we can see this is the primary D2 or primary dark two. And we've got primary dark one and so on. You can also just click to copy this. You can click to edit this if you want to, and you can click the color option and you'll see it'll show you the values based upon the color mode that you have. So if you want to refine these, you don't want to just immediately take the shades that have been chosen for you, you can now do that. And if you want to just simply copy the value, you can do that as well. So it's a pretty nice little touch for making sure your colors are exactly what you want. We've also got this new option called fill, which automatically generates the fill color classes for the selected color. 
Let's move over to Bricks next. Now I do have the Bricks add-on installed in here, so bear that in mind. But what you'll notice now is if we come into the Classes and Variables Manager, one of the new features inside Bricks itself, you'll see if we look at the variables, we've got our variables from Core Framework inside here as well. So that's pretty cool to see we now have those integrated directly inside you. And with the classes, you can see I've got all my classes inside you. But all I've done is simply gone to the uncategorized, select all the ones I want, grab the little hand, drop them over in there, job done. I've got them inside here as well now. So again, that's nice to see this is integrated into Bricks itself. Just makes things a little bit easier, a little bit nicer to work with. So now because we're integrated into the Variables Manager, inside Bricks itself, we can now take advantage of the Variable Picker. So you can see, for example, the text size, I can click, and there are all my variables listed inside there. So I can now take advantage of those options should I want to. So that's pretty cool to see. Same thing goes if we go into things like Layout, we can click, there's all our variables. So you can see, if we do a search, you can see we've got our spaces inside here and so on. So we can easily start to pick these directly inside Bricks Builder itself. So it's nice to have that all integrated into the native builder without the need for anything else. Now, another thing worth noting is we now have contextual variables as well inside Core Framework. So for example, if we click inside here with a right click and we choose the normal Core Framework picker, you can see we've got these contextual typography variables for the hero title size, post title size, and so on. So we have additional variables we can start to utilize inside you, which is pretty cool. So if you want to use contextual typography variables or spacing variables, you can use those as part of Core Framework inside Bricks Builder itself. Now, on top of all these features that I've covered, there are some fixes and some additional little quality of life enhancements, but I would recommend taking a look at the changelog for more information. And if you want to learn how to get started using Core Framework and set things up to work perfectly with Bricks, you can check out this video next. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care. Thank you.